And there's the clap. Hey guys, um, so I've got a bit of a overview tutorial for you here on the Toraz SB16 update. Uh, it's going to be a pretty quick video. This is not a lot to go through. Uh, basically, Pioneer have released the 1.2 update today for the Toraz. Uh, I received my Toraz yesterday. Um, when I got it, there was a few buggy things that were freaking me out. Proper freaking me out. Um, the MIDI the MIDI ports on the back weren't working. I was very disappointed with the internal effects. But today, they've sorted that out. I can now route my rolling system, my keyboard and everything through the back into the, the Toraz and, you know, fire all my samples and stuff. And also there's more effects. There's compressors, distortion units and... All sorts of lovely jubblies like that. So, uh, if you want to find out more about what they've updated, uh, I think it's on this page. Yeah, here we go. So, these are the new features. These are the improved features and the fixed features. Uh, one thing to note, the sound quality, master tempo, pitch. When I was using that yesterday, so like when you're going up the scale uh, on the pads, I did notice that the pitches were a bit off on some of the sounds, so that's what they've improved, so thumbs up Pioneer. Um, yeah, so if you want to download this update, you need to go to here, which is here, Pioneer's website, um, you want to download this link and this link. This link is this file here, sorry for the messy desktop, having a bit of a cleanse at the moment. Um, completely lost my train of thought. Oh, there we go. Yeah, so you download this file. Sorry, Jesus. This file, which ends up like this. If you're on a Windows system, it will be a zipped file. You will need to extract that file, and then you'll get this file. And the other file is basically just this, just the walkthrough guide, which I'm going to basically talk you through right now. So, um, the first time I did this, I ballsed it up. That's because I was using the wrong formatted um, USB drive. When I say that, what I mean is I was using Mac Extended Journal and you need to use a FAT32. And the way to check that is you go into your disk utility, you click on, say, drive, and you look down here, MS-DOS, which is fine. Like I said, this was originally a uh, Mac Extended Journal, so what I had to do is I had to go into Erase, and basically change it to that MS DOS FAT32 and then click erase. Boom. I'm not going to do it again because I've already done it. But once you've done that, you basically drag this file, drag it on there, just like that. And that's that. Um, then you basically eject the drive and don't pull it out like an idiot. And that's that. No, this is the tricky part. I do apologize for the lighting here. It is rather dire. I can afford all this expensive equipment, but it appears I can't afford a, uh, a few light bulbs. Um, let me just open something for a second. Because I have absolutely no idea what I'm recording here. I can't. Well, okay, let's just. We'll wing it, we'll wing it, it'll be right. Let me get some more light around here. Basically, what you have to do, you have to turn the machine off. This is how you basically install the update. You have to press the hold button, and you have to press the mode button at the same time whilst powering the unit up. So, that and that. Now, unfortunately, I'm not an octopus, so... I'm just going to have to rest you there for a moment. So, mode and hold, turn the power on. Just like that. Now you have to keep your fingers pressed until you see that, until you see that menu. Now hopefully you can read that. I mean, I don't know if this camera's going to pick that up. Fingers crossed it does. So once you see that, then you put the USB in. Which is here. Which way does it go in? 
that way. So you pop that in and it should do it automatically. Here we go. Now I've already done this, but uh, it doesn't seem to affect itself if you kind of install over the last install, as you can see there. Well, I hope you can. That says version 1.2 to version 1.2. So not much of a change there for me, but you know, for educational purposes, it doesn't do itself any harm. Yeah. So by the way, on this channel, I'm going to be doing uh, very in-depth tutorials about the Toraz. For anybody who's interested, I'm going to be doing some performance stuff on it. Um, yeah, man. It's uh, it's going to be good. It's going to be fun. And I'm going to be doing some comparisons between the Toraz and, as you can see there, the machine. And also, um, what's very cool about this, they've, they've incorporated like a, a TR8 kind of feel to it. You know, with these buttons. Now, I've not got my TR8 out at the moment because I've kind of run out of space, but hopefully you can see that safely in the box down there. Oh, yeah. So I'm going to be getting, putting loads of stuff away and getting all three out on the table and doing some comparisons and stuff. That's going to be cool. Uh, oh, yeah. So once that's updated, it'll say firmware update is complete. Turn the power off and on before using. So... Let's do that. Turn it off. Turn it on. <sighs> Let it do its tang. It's so pretty. It's so pretty. <laughs> and just like that, you now have an updated Torres SB16 with, let's have Luke. All the new effects, woohoo! And fully MIDI capable. So, yeah. Okay, I hope you enjoyed that video. If you have any further questions or get stuck or whatever, uh, feel free to contact me anytime about this product or any other audio matters. Um, yeah. Okay, so until next time, if I don't see you through the week, I'll see you through the window. Goodbye.